All right, good evening, everybody, once again. And you're welcome to day three of our webinar series, How to Trade in the Forex Markets by Abayo Mereshola. So thank you very much for coming in again. Um, we are still waiting for more people to join us. But while we wait for them to join us, I would like to introduce the guest speaker for today. And um, the guest speaker for today is my very good friend. Uh, his name is Damilola, Damilola Agbola Adekoya, and popularly known as Hill City on Twitter. So uh, he is one of the best traders that I know. And I think he's in the best position to talk to you today to teach you about the prop firms, about uh, making point of entry and point of interest, marking your point of interest about liquidity. And then um, we will recommend some prop firms to you that you can use. You know, he has made substantial withdrawal from the market. You know, having traded uh, different prop firms. Okay, so uh, I've traded and withdrawn from different programs. So I believe that you are going to gain a lot from the world of this knowledge tonight. So um, please, I, I would like you to give him your rapt attention and please give your, give your time, give your energy to practicing these things. You know, today we are, Okay, yesterday we discussed a number of things. We were able to touch just two of these points. The psychology for day traders to avoid over trading and how to systematically get out of drawdowns, right? So we've not touched on risk management and scaling up profits. So um, we're going to discuss that. That will be on Thursday by God's grace. Uh, yeah, yeah, that will be tomorrow. So as of now, um, I would like to give the floor to and that um, to UCT. So, and um, please, you can, if you have any questions, you know, you can drop your questions in the chat or you can wait till um, like 10 minutes to the end of the end of the class so that he will entertain your questions. We will entertain your questions together. So thank you very much. And the next voice you'll be hearing is the voice of UCT. Good evening, everyone. Um, first off, I want to appreciate Mr. Yomi for inviting me to this call. I don't take this for granted. I really appreciate the platform. And good evening to everyone. My name is Adekoya Daniela Agbola, as he has rightly introduced me, and I'm popularly known as EOCT. And that's my that's my username as well on Twitter. You can do well to follow me. And in this space call or on this Zoom call right now tonight, we are going to be looking at just these five points. And mind you, this is the part three of this session. And I'm going to be talking about how to mark out your POI and areas of liquidity. And I'm very sure that we've been hearing this word liquidity, POI, liquidity, POI, back and forth. And in fact, on Twitter, it has been like, the currency for traders, right? You hear it every now and then. So what then is this liquidity and what then is this POI is what we're going to be touching on tonight. And also we're going to be looking at the rec the prop firms that I recommend that I've you know interacted with in time past. And I'm going to be recommending the ones that I feel in my own experience, I, I feel okay, this these guys are you know they are well to do. Then we're going to be talking about the brokers as well that I've experienced and I can recommend. We're going to be talking about the requirement for your KYC verification in your account and all the requirements that it will take you to actually scale. So we're also going to be looking at how to trade your program from purchase to funded to withdrawal. All right. Okay. So 
uh, it's, go it's just going to be, it's not going to be much, much of talks like that, but I want to make sure that anything that I'm going to be saying, you will be able to derive value from it, okay? So, uh, first off, let me share a white screen so that we can talk about uh mr yomi please uh, i will need you to give me i'll need you to give me permission to share the screen please sorry are you there Hello, I'm with you. Hello. Okay, you're with me. Okay, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I can annotate on. I can annotate right here. All right. Don't worry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just I'll just use this. This. Okay. Well, you should you should you should go ahead and give me permission to share something, please. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. All right. All right. So basically, for our first points, right? Uh, marking out our POI and liquidity. So what is this liquidity we are talking about, right? There is no force about this. Liquidity is money, right? Liquidity means money. So if I say, okay, where is the point of liquidity that I'm looking at? I'm, looking at, I'm, I'm literally saying, where is the money in the market? Or where can I, where can I pick? Sorry. Okay, I can share whiteboard now all right so where exactly is the money at now i want you to see from this angle right forex trading is not made for retailers retailers like us to literally benefit from right there are these big banks that literally trade forex there are institutions that are in charge of the market fluctuations that place huge orders to you know move price up and down and these guys have their money involved, right? Now, the areas where they have the tons of volume of their money, right, involved is where we call areas of liquidity, where price will literally come back there and take out uninformed trader. Do you understand? Now, I'm going to be, like, there's no way uh some points of liquidity for you if i don't bring you back to okay basic structures in the market okay so now we know that we have just three structures in the market right we have a uh, consolidation phase we have a consolidation phase in the market right where market just moves sideways like this right so what price does in this is that it builds liquidity up above this area is what we call liquidity and below this area is what we call liquidity as well now why do we call this point liquidity right it is believed that we have support and resistance traders right people that you know they they draw their support up here right in a consolidated market they draw their resistance down here the consolidated market. So when, once markets touch this area, they sell. Once it touches this line, they sell. Once it touches this line, they sell. Right. Once it comes down, touches this line, they buy. Right. Like that. So they buy, they sell, they buy, they sell. And and in cases like this, for the forex markets, you always see this kind of consolidations during Asian sessions. That's why it is yeah. not advised for you. Like people tell, literally tell other traders not to trade the Asian session because it is quiet and markets just move sideways. Okay, so what happens yeah. in consolidation areas like this, whenever you see consolidation in the market, what they are trying to build is what they call liquidity in the market. Then you now realize that, okay, probably during London session, you just see a breakout, probably price move up, then comes down a little bit, then start moving back up. Or probably you see a consolidation like this, right then price will take this guy guys out then come back down right so there are situations like this now 
this area here is a point of liquidity. This point also is a point of liquidity. So what price we do is that if we trigger these guys out, the Asian eye is liquidity to take them out, right? Stomp on them, then it will sell. So it, it is going to take liquidity at both sides at the end of the day. And this, mind, this is, this is for a bearish case scenario, right? Also for a bullish case scenario, it's the same thing if you just invert it, okay? So the point is that, the point is that liquidity is built on both areas or both sides of the consolidating market. Now, we also have No, there is no slide for this lecture, sorry. All right, so we also have, we also have trending markets, right? Where we say uh, market moves, let's say, sorry, I'm not getting an angle yeah. this up today. Right, price moves like this, oh my God. Uh, This can you see my screen? Yes, you can see your screen. All right, so we have, I've talked about consolidating markets. We also have trending markets. Now I'm going to be drawing basic structures, okay? So now say for instance, we have, um, I don't know what's happening. Please hold on. Someone cannot see my screen. Okay. Thank you. Let me reshare this one. Sorry. Having a technical issue, right? Sorry. Okay, can you see my screen now? Okay, very good. All right, so I've explained about consolidating market. Now we have also trending markets, and in a basic structure, we have something like this, right? In a downtrend, right? We have a downtrend like this, right? So in this scenario, price just tends to do what? Great eyes, lower lows, lower eyes, lower low, lower eyes, lower low, lower eyes, like that, right? It keeps dropping like that. But you see, stuff like this is just textbook stuff. It does not happen like that, ideally, in the market, okay? Now, for uptrend as well, you know, we've been told that price just moves like this. It goes lower, lower, I mean, higher low, then higher high, higher low, higher high, like that, right? for an uptrend, but price does not move like this. Do you get? Now, what happens is that, so what happens is that at every, I want you to jot this down, at every, every old high and every old low are areas of liquidity, aside from patient I and low, because you know, I told you that consolidation regions, right? They are points of liquidity and Asian, Asian region all, always give us consolidation almost all the time. Not always, but almost all the time. So consolidation I, consolidation low are areas of liquidity. So automatically Asian eyes, Asian lows, they are areas of liquidity, okay? Aside from Asian eyes and Asian low. 
old eyes as well and old lows are areas of liquidity. What I'm saying in essence is that now, if we have a market that is trending like this, right? Trending like this, right? Now, this point is a point of liquidity as much as this point is a point of liquidity. This point is a point of liquidity as much as this point is a point of liquidity. This point is liquidity. This one is liquidity. All right? So every old I old do, old I old do, there are areas of liquidity. So I'm just trying to explain all of these things so, so that we will realize that, okay, what price, what literally moves price is liquidity in that sense, because price will always seek liquidity. Where is the money? So you can imagine, okay, an institution sold this price right here. Okay, so some people followed it, they sold it right here. So some, some of them that sold it, they, they probably were still in this sale, right? And some people also bought it when it started moving up because for every sale, there is always people that is willing to buy as well, right? So some people bought it right here. So here is a point of liquidity for price in a downtrend because some people are buying this market so they can be trapped. So price to sell to these guys, take their money, calm down, right? And so some people will also be trapped as well. So some people is buying, some people are also buying right here. Right, price to sell to them. So areas of liquidity like that. Then you you can also see price come back or take all of these guys and return back to sell. All right. So all of these guys right here, this one, this one, yeah. this one, they're all points of liquidity. So price can always go back there, take them out, and continue the trend. Okay. So I'm just explaining all of these things to us. So where you want to be looking out for are old eyes. Old lows, Asian high and Asian lows, their point of liquidity. Okay. All right. So, with that being said, right, POIs, there's nothing much about POIs. You know, we all know from our basic support and resistance, right? We all know that any, any points, right, any points that can, that has the tendency to reject price, right, to reject price for lower prices is an area of resistance. Any points that can reject price for higher prices, right, is an area of support okay, from our basic knowledge of support and resistance. So what you call your own support and resistance may be varying, right, depends on what you trade. So if you trade with support and resistance, or people trade supply and demand, so if you trade other blocks and all, call it whatever, they are all support and resistance, in my own opinion, in my own view, right? So picking area of, um, picking your point of interest, which is your POI, is dependent on, okay, where is the money at? Where is the liquidity at? Now, let me mark this out and erase some of these guys right here. Uh, let me show you one last thing before I move. Oh, please, if you are following me, let me know if you are following me. Are you following me, please? Please, are you following me? I need a response. Are you following me, please? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm following, following you. you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so now, Having explained where our liquidity points are, right? Now, we know that every high and every low are points of liquidity. Now, I'm going to be rushing things here, right? But I need you to pay a very good attention, a very, very good yeah. attention, because you may, need, you may need this, literally, because price will always come back to a point of liquidity. Now, for me, this is the way I view price. Now, if price is trending, Say price takes this blue, which it goes up like this, right? It's forming eyes and like that, right? I want price to come back. If price breaks this, I want price to at least come back. Sorry. I want price to come back and take 
a loop, right? Take a loop out before I start looking for a point of entry. But because I know that, okay, this one is a liquidity. Old lows, old eyes are point of liquidity. Okay, so any reference points right here, maybe is your support and resistance, maybe is your supply and demand, whatever you call it, will be your POI that is nearest to this uh, liquidity region. Right. Don't worry, the way you are going to be matching it up with your um, two lines, you will get there. All right. But whenever I'm looking at the chart and marking out points of uh, interest and liquidity, I, I always look at the higher time frame or whatever I'm going to be doing. Don't worry, we're going to be looking at, the chart, at some chart examples as well and we proceed. Okay. So, with that being said, let me quickly show you some of the things that I'm seeing on G so that we have a good grasp on what we are sharing. All right, so we are on G right now. Some quick example. And this is the daily chart, right? All right. So now, look at what I'm telling you right here. Now, price is doing something. I'm going to be trying something. Basically, the idea would be add is that price in a downtrend, price will just keep doing this, right? Keep doing this like this. But it does not happen in the market, right? This this guy. It does not happen in markets. Right? If it happens, it's just once in a while. Look at how price moves. Right? Price moved, gave us this guy, formed all of these structures, then came down, take this eye, then boom, moved, did this one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you something. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to Just follow me, please. Okay. Let me let me show you the difference between this and the other one. All right, look at this carefully. Right. This first one is basic, right? This is what we do. That okay, when once price is in a downtrend, price will just keep moving, forming higher eyes, when lower eye, lower low, lower eye, lower low, like that, right? But what are you seeing right here? Price will always what come back and take and take liquidity out before moving. Always look, look at it. So look at it. Price will always come back and take liquidity out. So I'm going to be showing you these regions. You can see the difference between this one and this one right here. Can you spot the difference? Now, price is giving us a downtrend from here. It changed, it changed its movements right here. Okay, then price started trending down. So it took this point, this old eye, like I told you, old eyes and old lows are point of liquidity. Where's our next liquidity? This point. Okay. So if you sold, you sold from here, um, of course, and um, this is our liquidity, our POI will be this support right here. Right? To be this support right here. So if I sold from here, I'll be looking to what? Take my profits right here. Now. Another thing happened from this eye now to this blue, you can see another old, old eye in between. This is an old eye, right? So this is my area of liquidity. If I'm going to be selling from this POI right here, which is an other block, where would be my where would be my TP? It would be right here. 
Are you seeing that? Now, in in this from this swing from this point also to this blue. Now, where is my point of liquidity? All of these guys, the areas of liquidity that price can react to. See all of these guys. All of them. All of these guys. Areas of liquidity. One who die, who die, who die. But the one that in, in cases where you have all of these old, old, old eyes, plenty like this, the one that will, should be your most most interest should be the one that is the the, the nearest to the eye. Or if you are looking at uh from, from below, from down, yeah. the nearest to the low. So this one is what I'm interested in. This is where I want price to come and clear before going my direction, like going down, because I know that this is, of course, a downtrend. Okay, so if I'm going to be looking for a POI to be this guy right here, you see price mitigated this one as well, and will be my take profit, this group. Right? So on and on like that, on and on like that, non-stop. Do you get it? So price will always come for an old blue in a swing. It will always come for an old blue in a swing. All right. So that is that about liquidity. Okay. Now, so talking about our POI, right? Like I showed us in this case, right? We have other blocks. Let me expand my screen so that you will see. We have other blocks which some people call support, su supply and demand or whatever, right? And we have su support and resistance. Some guys call these guys open and close candle. Let me delete this so that you You can see this black candle and this other one, the line between them, they call, they call it support, right? Some people call it S and R, so support and resistance. Right? Let me use the line charts. You'll be able to see what I'm saying. All right, so we have V shape and we have A shape. Yeah. I just hope these informations are not too much, but we have V shape and we have what they call A shape. So in this case, this is an A shaped support, and our resistance was V shape, right? This is this is a resistance. This is a support. This is a a, a resistance support like that, right? So this every V you see and every A, if you are looking at your line charts, they are support and resistance zones, right? Those are for support and resistance guys. So if we say, okay, uh, this is my liquidity, you already identify your point of liquidity. Where is your nearest point of interest? Where is your support or your other block or whatever? That should be your goal, okay? Once, once you identify your liquidity, your POI should be the nearest to the liquidity. Where do you want to enter from, okay? So now, let me just use this A shape, right? Since I already marked my point of liquidity to be this guy right here, so here is the closest to this guy. So I will turn back to candle, right? So you can see if I were to pick this trade, I would have picked this trade from this very top right here. Stop loss will just be a little bit above here. My take profit to be here. Very clean, right? So the same thing with this guy right here. From this point to this point, we have what? From this point right here. Sorry. Let me use okay, let me use this. From this point right here to this point. Right? From this point to this point, we have what? An old blue. Don't forget we are in a downtrend, right? So we have an Old I rather in between this point. So this point is our area of liquidity. So if I look at my line chart, where is my support? Okay, let me delete this one. Uh, I'll be using this guy right there, this V shape, because it's the nearest to this liquidity. So if I use this V right here, okay, so I'll be entering right from this one. So it's the same thing we are talking about, right? So support and resistance guys will be seeing this as a support. Uh, supply and demand guys will see this as a supply and demand. This is rally base rally or what they call it, a rally base drop rather, rally base drop. So in this case, they'll be seeing that as a, a supply zone. 
other block people will also be seeing this as another block. All right, so everything confluences. So right here, if I'm going to be picking this trade, I would have picked this trade right here. My stops will be a little bit above this guy and my TP will be here. All right, so that's just the basic thing to uh, the liquidity and your POI. So it depends on what you're trading, so support and resistance, whatever, right? It's just to understand the concept. The name does not matter, okay? All right, so having said that, I'll be moving straight up to the next thing on my agenda, which is recommending the best prop firms. Okay, so I've had some, uh, I've had some experience with some certain prop firms, which is quite cool. And I want you to realize one thing, before you select prop firms, make sure that you read their T and C. Shola, Shola Tokumbo, please don't write on my screen. Thank you. All right, so make sure that you read their ter terms and conditions very well and understand it. Because for me, I've read some terms and conditions that I'm not very, very cool and comfortable with. A lot of these guys, they hide their, their cruelty in their... They hide their cruelty in their terms and conditions, and they know that blacks, you know, we don't read, we don't read TNC, we just just wave it and and if the if they trick us right they, they will win at the end of the day because they, they write it here in their store because some some of them even write it that you know they can they have access to like they have access to like deny your funding and and the likes in their TNC. but if you don't read them you don't know all of those things all right so me, I will personally recommend the prop firms that I have used and have experienced, uh, have experienced withdrawal with them and all that. Number one prop firm that I've used is Funded Nest. They are good and they are their spread is quite all right. But if you are going to be going for a Funded Nest account, I would advise you strongly to go for a a swap free account, not swap account. I know that they are they are they are different in the sense that swap account is cheaper compared to swap free accounts. But if you are going to for a swap account, make sure that whatever trade that you are taking in a day ends that day, meaning you don't hold trades to the next day because these guys will literally kill you with their spread, right? They are their commission or swap fee or what they call it. When you will trade the next day, you can swallow up your profits like I'm even putting in loss for the most part. So if you want, if you are somebody that all trades for a long time, right, I would advise you to go for swap free accounts, particularly if you are trading with Funded Nest. But trust me, Funded Nest is a very good prop firm. I recommend it. Um, I've passed their challenges, made several withdrawals and all that with them. So they are reliable. Okay. And another thing is, the cons to fundedness is that their customer support is quite slow. To be honest, I I told them once 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 upon a time that their customer care they, they need to work on it. And, but it's a very good problem. If you are if you want to purchase a problem, I recommend fundedness. All right. Then I also recommend funding pips. Right, funding pips. Although they are not on MT5 for now, they are currently trading on Match Trader and. But the fact we remain that they are a reputable prop firm. I've had experience with them, past their accounts and all that. And they are really amazing. They are amazing. They are, their customer customer service is top notch. And yeah, I recommend funding groups. I also recommend my flash funding as well. Uh, it won't take you much, right? The only thing I see to my flash funding is their commission. And I think it's still yeah, very, 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 very good. Okay, very, very good. And Lastly, I recommend crypto, is it crypto funded trader? The crypto funded, yes, crypto funded. I recommend crypto funded. They are also very good. They are, they don't charge crazy commissions. Your swap is all right. They don't manipulate price and all that. So, and they are available on MT5. That's an amazing thing. So, wow. funded nest and crypto funded, they are available on MT5. So, it makes it very good. So I recommend 
these prop firms, if you are looking to trade or purchase prop firm accounts, I recommend these four. I've also had people talk about go funded, but for me, I've not had the personal experience with them, so I don't really know about go funded because I've not oh, traded any. All right. So, um, for the brokers, for if you want to trade with funds, the brokers that I recommend, there are basically two that I use very well. It's either I use the reef or I use Dexness. But I know of Antec markets, right? Antec markets provides good um this thing as well. Right. But then for me, the one I use, my own broker is Xness and Derry. The cons to Xness is that they manipulate price. I will not lie to you mm -hmm. about that. Right. Xness manipulate price. The especially if you are holding trades overnight and the likes, they they do crazy, crazy stuff. Okay, but then I I think I like them because it is very fast. Their withdrawal and their deposit is very, very mm -hmm. swift. That's mm -hmm. what I enjoy about them. Okay. And I also recommend Deriv. Deriv is a very good broker. I, I think people mistake the fact that you know you trade synthetic on Deriv. They think you don't have uh, the financial aspect. They, Deriv also have a currency peer account, like you, if you want to be trading forex purely peer currency pairs and uh, metals and all that, they also have uh, a compartment on their platform where you can register. They call it financial. So we have synthetic under there, we have financial under there. So there is also a very, very good broker, no spread, reason is perfect. And all that. The only cons to derive is that their payment option, you can't pay with your bank transfer and all, so you have to you have to transact with, with cryptocurrencies. Do you understand? So uh, those are the two best brokers that I have experienced and I recommend. Now, going to requirement for your KYCs, especially if you just newly passed your accounts and all, uh, it's not something that is out of the group. A lot of the time, they will just ask you to like uh, take a screenshot or take a snapshot of your face, like. They have a cam they have a camera or their platform. They just ask you to take a snapshot of your face, a live uh caption like that. And then most of the time they ask you for your uh what they call it now, NIN. Although some of these prop firms don't accept NIN, but I know that funding peeps accept voters card if if not NIN yet. Funding peeps are accept voters card. So if you don't have voters card. You should, I mean, you don't have voters card, yes. You should get your driver's license or passport. Most of them don't accept NIN anymore. Only if you selected few accept NIN. I think Fondedness also don't accept NIN, but they accept voters card, okay? So it's either you use your voters card, your driver's license, or your international passports. So any of those three works. And then they will ask you for proof of address, which is quite simple. You just stamp your utility bill and all that. So, those are just basic, basic stuff that you can easily get by. Now, uh, on how to trade your prop firm to purchase to funded to withdrawal, right? I, I know you would have talked about risks and its management, which is something that is very, very essential. I'm not going to be the one that will talk majorly on that, but I'm just going to give you an hint, okay? For me personally, I'll just tell you a story. For me personally, uh, the way I trade, my prop account is like, you know, trying to divide whatever I have into segments where I can literally say, okay, if I'm trading a 5K account, for instance, right? I can say, okay, I want to trade this 5K account 10 times before I blow it. Like, it means I will take 10 trades on this account. If I lose 10 trades, it means this account is gone. Or if I lose 20 trades, it means this account is gone. So how do I do that? Is that I I work with my daily drawdown, right? My daily drawdown is very, very important to me. Right? I work with my daily drawdown. I, I make sure that, okay, any account, any trade that I'm going to be picking would not exceed my daily drawdown. So for instance, I'm saying, okay, I have a 5K account I want to trade. 
and I'm going to be risking 0.5% of that account, which is literally $50, right? Or is it? $25. Right? Which is $25, yeah. So if I'm saying I'm going to be risking 0.5% of that account, there is no way I'm going to breach. I think the minimum for $5 is like $250 or thereabouts. Yeah, so there's no way I'm going to breach $250 in one day, even if I take five trades. Do you understand? So that's the way I approach it, right? So you you know the risk you want to take. If you want to be risking 1%, there's no, nothing bad in it as well. So you just know that, okay, within this range, you don't want to exceed your daily drawdown in a day. Or, and also have it at the back of your mind, okay, in a day, I want to take those two trades or I would just want to take three trades, right? Whatever outcome I'm going to be seeing because the psychology is very important. I know you are going to also talk about psychology as much as you talk about risk and all that because there is a whole lot of things that has to come into play when we are talking about trading, right? When talking about trading, especially if you're trading problem, it is, <laughs> problem is quite like, quite, it, it will test your psychology, honestly. Because nobody likes to see the account go red and all that. So you have to be very, very patient. Know your risks. Know uh, how to plan your trades. Because it's very funny because a lot of us don't plan. We don't plan ahead of, okay, I get an account. This is what I want. Or probably we just say it and we don't do it. Okay? So you have to plan your trades before you start trading that account and before you say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to trade this account to funded or trade this account to draw out, you have to have a plan. You have to have a solid roadmap to where you are going. It's just like you want to go from Lagos to, uh, from Lagos to like Abuja, for instance, then you don't know anywhere and you don't have any clue on where to go, which garage to go and all that. If you don't have any clue, you have Google Map, right? So you can easily go to Google Map. That's a plan. And you try to go to Google Map and type, okay, how to get to Abuja by maybe by vehicle or by airplane or whatever. So you're, you will see spots, maybe an airport where you can board, maybe a garage where you can go and all that. So those are plans, right? Step-by-step -step plans. You go here, you go there. So before you start trading, you also, you also have a trading plan as well. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is the number of trades I'm going to be picking. This is the overall trades that I'm going to be picking before this account blows up and all that. Do you get? So that's basically it for tonight. Thank you very much for having me. I hope you're able to get one or two values from the things that we discussed tonight. And thank you very much for this thing. Uh, Mr. Yomi. All right, thank you very much, Yusuf. All right, so thank you very much, Yusuf. And um, I want to believe that we're able to gain one or two things from what Yusuf taught us tonight. So I'd like to hear your response. Is there, did we gain anything? Does this make any sense? Is there someone talking? Um, Ali, 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 yeah, the, uh, class, the classes are recorded. Okay, how, how do I get them, sir? How do I get them? Um, um, after the okay. webinar, um, you'll be directed as to how to get it. After the whole, okay, yeah, after the five day series. Thank so, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, I know before, um, next week, Monday, 
or Tuesday, it will be available to everyone. All right. So, yeah, thank you. So, I... Hello, good, evening. good evening, sir. Um, good evening, Mr. Moore. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thanks for this class, sir. Oh, well, you're welcome. You're welcome, sir. Yes, sir. My question is that this thing, does it, because I'm hearing liquidity and higher lawyer, <laughs> uh, does it have any correlation with the two-line strategy? Mm. Mm. It's, not, it's not directly correlated to the two-line strategy. Sir? I think it is not directly correlated. The okay. liquidity stuff is not directly correlated to the two-line strategy. Remember, the purpose of this webinar is, it was a question I posed on Monday. Okay, what are the things that people need help with? And okay. people ask different questions. So, uh, probably there's one or two persons that are in this group, you know, that are on this call that um, they want to know more about liquidity. So that was the purpose okay. of this session, right? Okay, sir. Okay, yeah, sir. so, um, and I'm sure that you must have gained one or two things also from yes. the UCT thoughts, right? You, you may not directly use it, but you may still see where you can apply it. Right, where you can apply the the the, um, the lessons in your own trading, personally. So that's the okay, sir. Of, of the class. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. Okay. Yes, Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So um. Okay, is there any question? Do we have any question um for UCT with the rest of these minutes? You know, any question on liquidity, any question on um prop firms. I don't know. I was uh, I was off for a bit. And I, I, I don't know if UCT mentioned um about about prop firm. Yes, I did. All right. So um so what's the best profile that they can register with? Yeah, I recommended three. Okay. I recommended my flash fund. Okay, four rather. Okay. I recommended my flash funding. I recommended funded next. I recommended funding pips and I recommended crypto funded trader. All right, all right. Thank you very much. So those are ECT's recommendations. I think I've traded I've traded um my fund uh, funding pips my mff and um and the uh, fund and then uh, funded next of, of the three that you mentioned i got the four that you mentioned rather i've traded funded next and funding pips and i've traded blue guardian so and um, good funded so the underlying thing about about uh, problems is that you have to be um you 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 want to uh how do I put this? Like you, you want to be able, you want you want to be careful to read their policies. Hmm? Read their policies, don't let them catch you off guard. I was sharing my sad experience with one pro firm yesterday for those who are in yesterday's class. And you don't want those kind of you don't want to to put yourself to work and then you put your skill and your effort in the, on the table, and then someone will tell you that, okay, sorry, you are automatically disqualified for this thing for whatever reason, right? So you want to go through their rules, make sure you understand it very well. And sometimes it is best to have someone that has traded that account before, that kind of profile before, and um, they can tell you, okay, if this is a good thing to do, this is not a good thing to do, okay? So it's very, very wonderful. So again, um, um, and also about KYC. Okay, the best brokers. So you see what are the best brokers that they can use? Hello, are you there? Yes, we are there, we are there. You see Yes, 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 boss. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm with you. Sorry. 
Yeah. So which what are the best um brokers that they can use for those who want to yeah, do I, personal funds? Yeah, I recommend it to XNEX mm -hmm. and Derry. Okay. I, I've traded with XNEX. I trade with XNEX actually, but if you ask me, I'll tell you that I'm looking for alternatives to XNEX now because XNEX can be very funny. Yes, yeah, because of their spread. I mentioned yeah, their option. spread. And, and also there are times that they will widen the margin. Like you just mm. like they will, I mean sorry. Um I said yeah, they they widen the margin, the spread rather. They widen the spread, you know. I, I've noticed that the first one hour that the market opens, you know, the market has closed now on Xness. Mm. So by the time the market opens again by eleven PM, it's almost impossible for you to trade you know um for me that i trade gold the spread on gold for a naira account is 200 200, 200 uh, that's um like two pips or there about two pips yes and they can widen it as as much as um as much as i'm, I'm trying to see as much as how, how much can they widen it they can widen it as much as 600 900 and uh, uh, 1200 you know at the go for that one hour until it adjust, readjust itself by 12 a.m right so um each of these guys each of the brokers the profits they have their own downsides right yes excellence to tell you that they have minimum uh, low risk uh, sorry no commission and no swap which is a good thing of itself but you know they have um they have um a way of also owning the markets mm -hmm. i want to make sure that they don't own you in the markets all right so um thank you very much for um attending this lecture thank you city for sharing your knowledge with us and your expertise with us i want to believe that we we've learned a lot from uct and by God's grace, we continue our class tomorrow. Is that all right? All right. So with that, we draw the curtain for today's um for tonight's lecture. So tomorrow is day four, and I'll be I'll be speaking on on day four. I'll be speaking on risk management. And then um, on how to scale up profits, right? So those are going to be the bone of contentions for tomorrow. So thank you very much for your time. And I wish you a happy night rest. Thank you very much, sir. Good night. Good night, everyone. Yeah, good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Good night. Sure.